Greetings gamers, it's Tuesday, it's the 12th of March and that means it's time for another big fat hairy loser update. Well as predicted last week was a very challenging week for weight loss and to be honest there's still cake left over from celebrations so it will be hard to lose weight next week too. That being said, I'm still 0.2 kilograms down on last week, so I, although I was trying to keep my weight gain to a minimum, I actually have managed to shave a little bit off. Well, I think I might have done 0.2 kilograms is way within the error bars of the plus or minus one kilogram, uh, but I'm still quite proud of that achievement. Uh, in this video, I want to talk about the final macronutrient, fat. If you go to your doctor and get a blood test, you might hear the fancy word triglycerides along with your cholesterol readings. Triglycerides are another word for fat, which is composed of three chains of fatty acids attached to a single glycerol molecule. For a long time, I thought fat was the enemy of dieting, and there is some truth to that. Fats are extremely high in energy, that is to say calories, so even eating a small amount of fat can seriously eat up your calorie budget. But not all fats are unhealthy. Dietary fat comes in three forms, monounsaturated, polyunsaturated and saturated fat. There is also a fourth type of fat that occurs only in very trace amounts in nature but is artificially produced and used in food preparation in the fast food industry and in packaged pre-prepared ready meals and snacks as well as in margarines and shortening. This is known as trans fat uh, or trans fatty acids. These are basically partially hydrogenated, unsaturated fats. You take unsaturated fats and heat them to a high temperature and high pressure and the unsaturated fat molecules contort into an unnatural shape, giving them an ideal melting point. Trans fats are favoured by the food industry because they are cheap taking the cheapest oils and stabilizing them through partial hydrogenation means greater profits over using more expensive saturated fats. Trans fats generally have a lower melting point and a higher smoking point making them great in cooking, baking and frying. One of the biggest worries facing the medical profession at the moment is that artificially created trans fats which are popular in our favourite snacks. Currently, most countries, including Britain, only have a voluntary code of practice for food labelling trans fats. The best advice for avoiding trans fats that I can think of is simply to avoid fast food and prepare the food yourself until such time as there are robust laws that are enforcing good practice in food labelling to ensure our safety, rather than relying on the food industry to self-regulate. The harsh truth is that so long as people don't care about how much trans fats they're eating and there aren't robust regulations in place, the food industry will continue to do what is popular and profitable regardless of the long-term health concerns. Okay, so why are trans fats so bad? Well, numerous studies now uh, have shown a link between the amount of trans fats we have and coronary heart disease. Uh, trans fats are particularly bad for furring up your arteries. Now that having been said, of course, the USA are on the ball with compulsory labelling of food containing trans fats. Many manufacturers have already made the step towards using palm oil instead of trans fats. Some have also changed their fat stabilisation technique to fully hydrogenise the oils into fully saturated fats. Furthermore, many leading supermarkets in the UK signed a pledge to remove all trans fats from their own brand products. 
The food industry is slowly complying with health concerns raised by doctors and governments, but due to public apathy towards trans fats and cravings for their tasty treats, it's often more profitable to continue to use trans fats and hide the fact in the nutritional information. A trans fat is a chemical isomer of an unsaturated fat, so simply labelling a product containing trans fats as having unsaturated fat is often sufficient to comply with current food labelling laws in the UK and throughout Europe. This is ironic since mono and polyunsaturated fats are generally good for our health and saturated fats are no longer considered to be as bad for us as they used to be. One of the healthiest types of fat, in fact, is an unsaturated fat called omega-3. Omega-3 fats are supposed to actually protect against heart disease. These kinds of fats are found mainly in oily fish such as mackerel and salmon. This reminds me of the old days when parents used to force feed their children cod liver oil. Yuck! However, a nice portion of mackerel, yum! Most oils, fish and nuts are high in beneficial unsaturated fats, whereas red meat and dairy products contain more saturated fats. Now saturated fats have turned out to be not quite as unhealthy as people originally believed. This means we can go back to having the occasional beef steak or lamb chop, not that we ever actually gave them up in the first place. From now on, since I can't trust the food labelling, I'll be trying to cut down on pre-prepared food and fast food. That means more time spent in the kitchen preparing meals rather than taking something out of the freezer and popping it in the oven. Unfortunately, I'm the kind of person that can't bear to throw food away, so these changes won't be overnight. I'll just stop replacing the old food as it gets used up. And that about wraps it up for me, big fat hairy gamer. Uh, I'll keep you posted as to my weight uh, next week. Uh, other than that, I will look forward to seeing you in another video.